A Kroger employee with the coronavirus calling out the company for an unsafe working environment. CBS 46 is getting results for senior citizens in need of personal protection equipment in the midst of this pandemic. Doors aren't going to go open. We're going to creak them open a little bit. Georgia closed for business, but how long will it last? Puppies worth a total of almost $60,000 taken from this Gwinnett County pet store to search for the missing dogs and the burglars. But tonight, a major grocery store chain wants its employees to be considered first responders. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 9. I'm Sean Gables. Good evening, Sean, and good evening to you. I'm Rick Fulbaum. Kroger wants the government to step in to help protect their employees. CBS 46's Jamie Kennedy learning a Kroger employee at a store in East Atlanta has just tested positive. So there's no, no precautions where the taken in the store. A Kroger employee who's tested positive for the coronavirus. And she tested positive on yesterday. Calling out the store for what she says is an unsafe environment for employees and customers. Should have been more measures taken to try to ensure that they kept people away from them. It was like people reaching over her, trying to grab products and stuff, you know, to make a purchase. Kroger wants the government to reclassify its employees as extended first responders or emergency personnel. The company hopes the designation will make sure its workers get priority access to masks and gloves. Kroger says it's already taken steps to keep associates and customers safe. The sick employee's family says she refutes that, but says they have reached out to her. Well, as far as I know, they're trying to see if they can go and get her, um, you know, some type of paid compensation for um, the time that she's going to need off. I reached out to the company specifically asking them about their cleaning protocols and about how many employees have tested positive for the virus and we are yet to hear back from them. 
In Atlanta, Jamie Kennedy, CBS 46 News. Jamie, thank you. And some of those grocery stores are now offering special hours for those on the front lines of the coronavirus outbreak. Publix says it will open early and close late for first responders and hospital staff. They are invited to shop from 8 p.m. until 9 p.m. on Thursdays and from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. on Fridays. Publix pharmacies will also be open during those times. Sam's Club also reserving special hours for healthcare workers and first responders. They're calling them hero hours. They will be on Sundays from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. Sam's Club says it will give out face masks and gloves during the special hours and encourage social distancing. All new at nine coronavirus cases, topping 15,000 in Georgia. The Department of Health's latest report showing 15,260 cases. 576 people have died from the virus. A quarter of those were in Fulton and Doherty counties. States across the country are forming special task forces to determine the safest way to reopen during this pandemic. Georgia's task force is made up of 18 officials from the Health Department, the Education Department, and the General Manager of Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. Governor Kemp formed the group back in February before Georgia had even had its first confirmed coronavirus case. A local economist says the process, whenever it happens, will be gradual. The doors aren't going to go open. We're going to creak them open a little bit and take a look and take a look again. And people aren't going to like it. But I think that's going to be best for the long run health of our citizens. And Governor Kemp said at a news conference earlier this week that his primary focus is expanding coronavirus testing. Appreciation on display for health care workers on the front lines. Emergency vehicles paraded in front of the CDC, Emory University Hospital, and other health care facilities during tonight's shift change. More than 100 first responders participated in the parade. CBS 46 getting results tonight for a local senior living facility pleading for help tonight during the coronavirus outbreak. A woman at the forest at York and Noonan says they are in desperate need of supplies to keep residents and the staff safe. And that's where CBS 46's Tracy Bragg is as he stepped in to help. That's right, Sean. To many of us, this is just a mask, but to the folks inside that senior living facility, this is a potentially life-saving tool. We look out for suspicious activity and to help uh, protect our community. Joe and her husband, Bobby Jones, started a neighborhood watch group in their senior living facility seven years ago. These days, many of the neighbors they vowed to protect are asking the same question. Do you have an extra one? I don't want to leave the house because I need a mask. Many of those asking are in their 80s and a few are even in their 90s. So Jones decided to call CBS 46. If anybody could donate 85 masks for our senior community, it would be so ever appreciated. I began searching for donors. That search led me to Grant Wallace. He made it his mission to help small business owners during this pandemic. Every little bit helps, right? Turns out he decided to add senior citizens to that list. I will donate. That is that is a, a, what you should do. And just like that, 100 masks are headed to Jones and her neighbors. And whoever it is, thank you from the bottom of your heart and may God return in seven folds back to you. Wallace tells me the seniors can expect the much needed delivery in seven to 10 days. Reporting live in Noonan, I'm Trace and Bragg, CBS 46 News. Tracen getting results. Great job out there. Now make sure you check your bank accounts. The IRS has sent out a round of stimulus payments today. We hope you got yours. Uh, the IRS now says an estimated 80 million Americans should have received their deposits already. If you are not one of them, the IRS just launched a get my payment tool where you can check for your status. It's available right now on irs.gov. If ATC Income Tax Service uh, prepared your tax returns, you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer for your stimulus check. Uh, we have learned at CBS 46 that the money was deposited into MetaBank's account and not the customers. ATC says you can get information on the status of your check on their website.
I'm Alicia Roberts at the live desk. Happening at tonight's task force briefing, President Trump said money from China already paid to the U.S. Treasury will be distributed to farmers across America, quote, soon. It's estimated farmers could lose $20 billion this year due to COVID-19. Former Georgia Governor and Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue also spoke today addressing food supply concerns. In the United States, we have plenty of food for all of our citizens. I want to be clear, the bare store shelves that you may see in some cities in the country are a demand issue, not a supply issue. Also late today on Twitter, Governor Kemp encouraging residents to visit georgiagrown.com to support local businesses. Alicia Roberts, CBS 46 News. There is already a chill in the air tonight. Current temperatures falling into the 40s across many areas outside of Metro. Still 54 degrees at the airport. But when you look at temperatures today compared to last night at this time, they're down anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees. It's even 14 degrees cooler in LaGrange. That will carry us into the overnight hours. It will be a clear but cold night with morning lows in the 30s and low 40s. We're not going to see any frost overnight because we're still going to see light winds. But some areas will be near freezing tomorrow. So again, if you're going to be out early, you are going to need a coat. That will not last. We'll get a sunshiny day tomorrow, very similar to today, but a little bit warmer. Through the afternoon, temperatures will top out near 70 degrees with beautiful conditions. Coming up throughout the hour, I am going to show you the pollen levels, which have increased pretty significantly just in the last day. And we'll take a look at our storm chances, which look like they are increasing as we head into the weekend. Thanks, Ella. A crime alert tonight. Puppies worth tens of thousands of dollars snatched from a Gwinnett County pet store. All of it caught on surveillance video. CBS 46's Brittany Miller live where the dogs were stolen and Brittany police are looking for the animals and the criminals who took them tonight. That's exactly what they're doing tonight. In the meantime, let me show you and break down the scene for you. Police say that the two criminals used a bat or a long pipe to smash the glass here and get inside. In the middle of the night, two burglars break into local breeders' puppies in Lawrenceville. This video is hard to see, but the dog snatchers go straight for the pups. Police say they pulled them out of their cages and tossed them into green bags, one puppy thrown on top of the other. Multiple cameras then show the criminals going behind the counter, ransacking the place. Police say they stole $400 from the registers. This angle shows them in color walking through the back of the store with bags full of expensive dogs. Police say they got away with five English Bulldogs worth $4,500 each, four Yorkie Poos worth $3,250 each, four Maltese worth $3,295 each, two Shy Poos worth $2,850 each, one Shih Tzu worth $2,850 each, and three Morkies. The total price tag, almost $60,000 worth of precious puppies. And we do not know why the pet store was targeted. Uh, the Gwinnett County Police Department is asking for anybody with information to please contact the police department or call Crime Stoppers. And at last check, those puppies are still missing tonight, but we wanted to know if there's been an uptick in burglaries here in Gwinnett, Gwinnett County. So we had a look at the numbers. Here's what we found out. There's been about a 36% decrease in those crimes in just the last month. Live in Gwinnett County, Brittany Miller, CBS 46 News. Brittany, thank you. New at nine, two men accused of carjacking a woman at an Atlanta MARTA station are in custody nearly 12 months later. MARTA police, they announced the arrest of 17-year-old Javante Avery and 18-year-old Deshaun Garrison. The carjacking happened at the H.E. Holmes station last April. Both Avery and Garrison are charged with armed robbery, aggravated assault, carjacking, and possession of a firearm. Isolation is becoming an inspiration for a local college professor. Coming up next, the life-saving equipment he's creating. I do miss them. I'm thinking about them all day, every single day. A Gwinnett teacher is spreading some positivity with what I like to call some chalk spiration. <laughs> and here's a live look outside over Midtown on a beautiful but chilly and crisp evening. You're watching CBS 46 News at 9 on Peachtree TV. We're coming right back.
Enable the CBS 46 skill on your Alexa device and get local news and weather updates anytime directly from CBS 46. Now, CBS 46 Pinpoint Weather. Thanks for making CBS 46 the fastest growing news in Atlanta. Doctors and health researchers predicting a coronavirus vaccine could be ready this fall. The National Institute of Health's lead scientist for coronavirus vaccine research says it would be ready to use by frontline health workers first. The general public could have access by next spring. The drug touted by President Trump as a game changer is not helping coronavirus patients. This is all according to a new French study. Doctors say they found no major differences between patients who used hydroxychloroquine and those who did not. The study also found the drug was associated with heart complications. A Georgia Tech professor finding a spark of creativity while teaching from home. He's using his free time creating potentially life-saving equipment. CBS 46's Adam Murphy has the story. Meet Steve Chininis and welcome to his makeshift office. Ready for business. He set up shop in his garage a month ago for the most unlikely reason. Uh, I mean, yeah, I just been calling it the garage factory. His factory is equipped with 3D printers and a homemade exhaust vent, which got the attention of neighbors. I've known Steve a long time and it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> It takes a minute to heat up. So you know. in between teaching online classes at Georgia Tech, Steve finds time to make face shields for medical workers battling the coronavirus. Stuff in your garage is such a small thing compared to what they're doing and risking their lives. He can make up to 30 face shields a day, potentially saving lives for less than $10 a piece. So I just wanted to show you that they actually do work. Uh, it's normal for Steve. <laughs> He's always being creative and doing things. and. And um, I think it's awesome that we as a neighborhood are pulling together and he's leaning on the, everybody and, and helping out. I mean, we're really talking about saving lives. And it just shows you can make a difference while working from home. Steve's garage will be back open for business tomorrow and as long as there is a need. On Wilmer Drive in Peachtree Corners, Adam Murphy, CBS 46 News. Tonight, a local small business owner is keeping her doors open and employees on staff by taking her business on the road. Navy vet and France native Lisa Rore is the owner of Lisa's Creperie and Cafe in Sonoya, and she's now operating out of her new food truck thanks to community support. Instead of staying in one place, Lisa heads to various Metro Atlanta neighborhoods so customers don't have to go far for orders. Ever since the third week of March, we've been going around keeping our 11 employees working hard to feed everybody in the comfort of their homes. Lisa and her staff take orders over the phone or online and calls customers one by one once their order is ready to be picked up. If you'd like to book her to come to your neighborhood, we have a link on our website. Now, CBS 46 Pinpoint Weather, certified Atlanta's most accurate forecast. I've look over Atlanta skyline, you can see 
The sky is still bright, even though there's not a whole lot of activity downtown. Current temperatures are getting quite cool outside. In the 50s across the board, hot spot tonight, if you will, is Athens sitting at 57 degrees. I want you to look at the dew point because it's very low. It's a measure of the moisture in the air. Dew points in the 20s tell me that the air is extremely dry. There is almost no humidity. For that reason, it is going to get quite cold quite fast overnight. High pressure is in place. It's what brought us the blue skies today, and it's what will bring us the clear skies overnight tonight. Morning lows will be even cooler than they were this morning, and this morning was downright cold outside. Tomorrow morning, 30s, especially across northwest Georgia and into the mountains, maybe in the mid to low 30s. Not expecting widespread freezing tips, but I do want to mention that Clay County, North Carolina is under a frost advisory overnight. So if you live in those higher elevations, if you have any early plants or window boxes, cover them or bring them inside. Low 40s for Atlanta and Metro tomorrow. Here's the good news. We'll not see a cloud in the sky through the day. It's going to be another crystal clear day with temperatures climbing into the upper 60s. So about 7 to 10 degrees warmer than today without the wind. So it will feel substantially warmer through the afternoon, especially areas east of Atlanta. 72 degrees in Athens tomorrow, 65 in Griffin. It'll be 68 in Gainesville at the peak of tomorrow afternoon's heat at around 4 p.m. Friday, we jump into the mid-70s. We'll see increasing clouds through the day. That's the precursor to our next rain system, which moves in through the weekend. It's actually going to be two separate systems that move through that bring us the chance for widespread showers. Uh, and it does look like we are going to see the chance for thunderstorms. Let me show you this really quickly. Again, by Friday night, we see increasing clouds. We're under cloudy skies. On Saturday, that's when the first system moves in. It's just going to be a few isolated showers, not expecting any storms. We'll see the sunshine return through the first half, second half, excuse me, of Saturday. But then on Sunday, our rain chances increase, especially in the afternoon. And overnight Sunday into Monday, we do see a shot at some thunderstorms. I do not see a widespread potential for severe weather like we did this past Sunday night, but we could still see a few strong storms. So that is something we will definitely continue to watch. But again, Sunday into Monday will be our next chance for thunderstorms. Looking at Atlanta's most accurate forecast, 70s to even the 80 degree range by this time next week. So much warmer as we head into the third week of April. The CBS 46 weather team bringing the classroom to your children every weekday at 1.15 p.m. Chief Meteorologist Jennifer Valdez exploring the world of weather. Tomorrow's lesson is on the supermoon. You can watch this segment live on the CBS 46 streaming app. Well, a teacher is using creativity to bring some sunshine to her third grade class. CBS 46's Barmel Lyon shows us what a little bit of chalk and a lot of love can do. It's therapeutic to me. It's something I've always enjoyed. Gwinnett County teacher Alexis Priest is spreading positivity amidst COVID-19. This is hard for everybody, but I can't imagine being a kid going through this right now. There's so many questions and uncertainties. They don't understand what's going on. A lot of adults don't understand. With one scratch at a time, Priest wanted to let her third graders know she cares. You know, that would be really cool just to go and do that. Priest contacted parents ahead of time about the surprise. I got a ton of emails back going, oh my gosh, I love this. That's so nice. Lance Bilbrew was one of them. It just showed that she really had a heart for what she does and a heart for her students as well. His son, Lance Bill Brew Jr., saying he not only misses his teacher, but his friends. Some of my friends, I can't like FaceTime or anything. But if your kid comes to the door and they spot me, I said, let's wave, let's have a conversation. And I got to see, I think about five or six of my kids sat on their porch or waved at their front door. From online to outside, Priest says, we're all in this together. Priest wanted to say this message to her students. I miss you. I wish I could hug all of you and I will see you very, very soon. That was Barmel Lyons reporting. An Atlanta based comedian tells Astrid in the ATL that dealing with coronavirus is no laughing matter. And if you're going stir crazy after a month of social distancing, you are not going to like what Harvard researchers are saying tonight. We'll be right back.
Thanks for making CBS 46 the fastest growing news in Atlanta. Okay, I'm not sure who's ready to hear this, but could you handle two more years of social distancing? That's what a team of researchers at Harvard University or the Harvard School of Public Health is predicting unless a COVID-19 vaccine becomes available. The group used data of today's coronavirus with other similar viruses to create possible outcomes. Their study says social distancing measures may need to last for months to effectively stop the virus from spreading. If the virus is around in a few people and we aren't uh, imposing control measures, it will resurge. If we could get a vaccine, that would be a total game changer. Um, that's a long way off. That's probably almost certainly a year off. Researchers at the Harvard School of Public Health say COVID-19 still poses a serious threat. Measures like stay-at-home orders and school closures may be needed until at least 2022. Whoa. All right. An Atlanta-based comedian continues to recover from coronavirus four weeks after being diagnosed. Astrid in the ATL tells us how he's coping with COVID-19 and a newfound source of stress that comes from the virus. Comedian Baldhead Phillips is concerned about two major issues, how this virus is impacting the African-American community and all the bills he's receiving from the hospital while still being sick and unemployed. None of us are your grandfather. Making people laugh is a passion for longtime comedian Baldhead Phillips. But Phillips says being diagnosed with coronavirus is no joke. COVID-19 is affecting minority communities at disproportionate rates. You've got to be out of your mind, no matter what theories you're having, no matter what situations you feeling about the government, this is upon us. Bobby! The Atlanta-based artist contracted the virus early March while performing in Chicago. During his flight home, Phillips' symptoms began to escalate. Then when I landed in Atlanta, I was drenched with sweat, dizzy, fever, uh, felt real weak, barely could walk, and it took me, it took me a lot not to pass out. And I was getting like 760 a week. Phillips went straight to the hospital, but was told he had strep throat. Two days later, he took a turn for the worse. From that point on, went to the emergency room, and they kept me. My fever was high, breathing was erratic. They checked my breathing and everything, and my lung capacity was at 13%. Um, I had been coughing up blood. A month into this horrific experience, Phillips is now dealing with an added stress on top of being unemployed. I got my, I got my, my first bill was like fourteen hundred dollars, and that was what that was for when they said I had strep throat. Phillips knows this is a financial challenge he'll soon have to battle, but for now he's focusing on his health. You know I can't go and try to argue with anything or put a point up because I want to be fully recovered and I don't want to stress. Now, Phillips is still waiting for bills from the hospital when he stayed there for two weeks. He expects that to be in the thousands. He does have a GoFundMe page set up. If you can help, that will be on our website. That's all for Astrid in the ATL.